Today we're talking about the successor of the X100V, the X106. Fujifilm has released this camera with two major improvements, the fifth generation sensors from Fujifilm, as well as IBIS. Now the fifth generation sensor comes with 40 megapixel. However, the body of the Fujifilm X106 comes with the previous lens, the 23 mm f2 lens that was present in the previous generation. Now this lens is able to resolve the 40 megapixel of the sensor, which allow you to have more details and more crisp details in your picture. However, in our tests, we saw that um, basically this lens performed the best not at f2 but at f2.8 where all the sharpness of the picture can really come out and feel the best. So if you plan to shoot on this lens, I would say stick between f2.8 and f16. At f2, especially at really close range, you can see that there are some sharpness issues at the center. Now in terms of image stabilization, this camera comes with a six-stop IBIS, allowing you to take pictures in challenging environments, especially with low light, without necessarily having to decrease your shutter speed too much. However, keep in mind that this will not compensate for the movement of your subject, but only the micro movement that you have when taking a picture. With this IBIS, we managed to take proper shots with the shutter speed as low as one over eighth of a second, so it seems to work pretty well and this is definitely a good improvement compared to the previous generation. Now in terms of the body itself, well the body of the X100V and the X106 are extremely similar, however the X106 is slightly thicker compared to the previous generation due to the introduction of IBIS. You will still find the familiar dials on top of shutter speed and uh, so this is a double dial, shutter speed as well as ISO and exposure compensation. And you will also find an aperture dial on your lens that is very clicky and comfortable to use. In terms of the screen, there is no improvement in resolution the screen. However, now the screen tilts down about 45 degrees, which is an improvement compared to the previous generation, which was around 30 degrees or so. So if you're really trying to shoot from a low point and uh, get a picture high, this will help you to get a more comfortable handle. The viewfinder as well is identical to the previous version. And you're getting a kind of hybrid approach where you can go full EVF, full OVF, but also with a superpose basically um, EVF preview that can be added to uh, whatever you see in the image. Personally, I tend to use the EVF because it makes it simpler for me to di directly preview the exposure, but you have the option to choose between OVF or EVF. Now in terms of peripheral for this camera, well you have access to USB-C as well as micro HDMI and a 2.5mm jack, which is ideal for remote release shooters, but I would have preferred personally a 3.5mm jack. Um, because this would allow you also to monitor audio if you need without an adapter. Now, in order for Fujifilm to be able to keep that slick design, they are still keeping this particular um, battery. So that's the oldest generation battery from Fujifilm. And this battery is also located in the same slot as the SD card that is accessible right here below the camera. Now, the advantage of having both of them in the same slot means that you save space. However, the big disadvantage is that if you are using tripod mounts or any mount under your camera, you won't be able to have access to your battery and your SD card slot. Meaning that whenever you need to change SD card or battery, you will need to unmount the whole thing. So keep that in mind. I can picture that most of the people who will use this camera will not be using it with tripod much or tons of accessories, but that's just something to keep in mind. Now, in terms of film simulation, you have access to the newest and latest film simulation from Fujifilm, which is Real Ace. I will leave some sample pictures right now in the video for you to see. But basically, if you're familiar with Fujifilm film simulations, those are basically kind of presets in your camera that will allow you to get straight out of camera JPEGs that barely need any editing and are already look really good. And Real Ace is pretty much a bit of classic Chrome and a bit of Provia. So if you're familiar with those, try to mix them together and you will basically have an understanding of what is realized. 
Now, when it comes to the ISO comparison, we've tested different ISO from ISO 125 to 12,800. And here is the different grain type that you can expect. Now, the grain is definitely present, but not a deal breaker at all. And Fujifilm is known for its kind of comfortable and uh, beautiful grain. So this is basically the, the grain and the, the different uh, noise that you can expect at different ISO values. Now, the X106 is not only a great companion for photography, but it is also for videography. The X106 offers 180p as well as 4K uh, from 24 to 60 frames per second uncropped, either in 16x9 or DCI. There is also a 4K HQ that this one is a crop, um, crop version of the image, as well as 6.2K supported. And the 6.2K and the 4K HQ will basically give you a 1.24 time crop, which is about 43mm um, field of view equivalent. Now the IBIS is also a welcome addition when it comes to video because it allows you to stabilize your footage directly in camera. Now as this camera does not have a flip out screen, it will mostly be for people who stays behind the camera and not vloggers, which I think is honestly most of the people nowadays. If you want to take good videos of your travel, which this camera is pretty much uh, made for because it is portable and easy to carry everywhere. So the IBIS will be helpful for that. And in our test, we managed to record about one hour of 4K uh, 24p before the battery uh, basically gave out. However, when you switch to the 4K HQ mode, we managed to get about 30 minutes out of it. So be aware of this. If you want to go with the HQ mode, you will have to care more about the battery life. Now, speaking of battery life, because Fujifilm has kept the former generation's battery, uh, you will definitely see this as a limitation when you go out for a shoot. We managed to get in our test about 100 to 150 shots per battery, which can be quick or can be uh, really long depending on your shooting style and what you're shooting, right? Now, one of the huge aspects of this camera is its portability as well as its pocketability. Um, it fits in your small jacket pocket or your sweater's pocket easily make, and it makes it easy for any, uh, any, any person really to bring this camera wherever they want. So if you are looking for a camera that is easily pocketable and that will allow you to create great content, whether it's photo or video, this might be just a camera to help you do that. Now Fujifilm has really been the leader of this kind of camera on the market since the X100V and with the X106 which has already received 500,000 of orders uh, so far and is already back ordered for maybe maybe this year I don't know we can basically assume that this one will be extremely successful as well. So if you are someone who is interested in this kind of pocketable camera but still want to have good quality pictures and video then this camera might just be made for you. Let us know down in the comment if you have any other question about the X106. Thank you for watching Pro News. And if you've missed it, check out this video right here. We'll see you there.